I also want to welcome everybody who's uh, either watching online or listening to the podcast. It's great to have you as well. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas from wherever you are at, too. Uh, if it is your first time with us, or maybe first time in a while, we are wrapping up a series of messages we've been in all month long, and we're kind of calling these messages Songs of the Season. And what we've been doing is taking a look at very popular, familiar Christmas carols and and seeing how the lyrics can be more than just Christmas lyrics, but actually remind us of incredible truth. How these how these songs can remind us of who God is and his character and his heart for us. And we've covered three weeks so far. And uh, if, if you want to go back, you can find all those on our YouTube channel or on the podcast. But here's some of the stuff that we've talked about so far. The very first week of this series, we looked at the song, The First Noel, and we saw that in these lyrics, we can be reminded that God is not forgetful. That even though he doesn't always work on our time frame and we can't always see everything that's happening, we can see that God is faithful, that he doesn't forget us. And in light of God's track record in the past, man, we ought to be able to trust him more with our lives and things that are going on right now. The second week of this series, we looked at the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and and really kind of hone in on the fact that it's not necessarily us who goes to God, but it is God coming to us. He is the one who took the initiative when we were far away, when we were separated. Emmanuel comes to us. Last week, we looked at one of my favorite Christmas songs, Silent Night. And I think for every one of us, we've, we've wondered the question before, what is God really like? Well, in Silent Night, we're reminded that the Son of God is love's pure light. If we want to know what God the Father is like, well, we have an incredible opportunity. We can look at the perfect reflection of him in his son, Jesus. And today, as we get ready to wrap up this series, the song that we're going to look at is Joy to the World. Now, Joy to the World, I don't know if you knew this or not, but it was actually not written as a Christmas song at all. It was written in the early 1700s by a guy named Isaac Watts, and it was really just kind of his reflection on a psalm in the Bible, Psalm 98. And this, is, this was just kind of what came out of his heart as he thought about all the words he read in there. But since the beginning of the 20th century, Joy to the World has become the most published Christmas song in North America. And there's probably a lot of reasons for that. You know, as soon as it got put to a catchy melody and you add sleigh bells and all that, it just feels more Christmassy. But but also some of the words in Joy to the World line up so well with the words of the Christmas story. I would guess that most of us here, even most of us online, we're, we're at least a little bit familiar with Jesus' birth. You know, there were Mary and Joseph and this virgin birth and they got to make their way to Bethlehem and there's no inn and all of those sorts of things. But Right in the middle of the story, there's an angel that comes to visit some shepherds in a field. And this is what the angel says. Do not be afraid because I bring you good news. And this good news will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The story goes on that suddenly there were a great company of heavenly hosts all worshiping and praising God like this supernatural kind of mind-blowing concert happening. Would have been cool to be there, I think. And then the shepherds, you know, they, they hurry off to the manger to see, is this really true? And they find out, yep, it's absolutely true. The baby was born, the son was born. And that's, that's basically the Christmas story that you read in Luke chapter 2. But here's, here's the question. I think when we when we read this, when we hear it, or even when the song Joy to the World comes on the radio or we sing it or whatever, I think the natural question that, that we can ask is why? I mean, why did the angel say there was going to be great joy for people? Why, why do we celebrate this Christmas thing anyway? Well, when was the last time you stopped to, to think about that question? I mean, it, it seems so odd compared to everything else we do in life, you know? I mean, by, by this point now in our day and age, the, the, the news about Jesus' birth is a couple thousand years old. It's not exactly fresh news. Why are we still celebrating? We don't, we don't do this as people for anybody else. There's not civilizations and entire empires that have, have kind of remembered the birth of, of one person. We don't remember any other important historical figure like this. I mean, even, even if we believe the story and some thoughts about Jesus, it's just so outside the norm of what we do. We don't remember and celebrate birthdays. Why do we sing 
joy to the world. I mean, there's going to be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world today singing those words, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Why did the angel say to the shepherds that there was going to be great joy that was available for all people, even including us? And I think there's there's a lot of implications and ways that this can play out in our lives. But I think if you boil everything down, I think you come to one reason. The reason the angel said great joy, the reason for Christmas, the reason we sing joy to the world is because of this, a relationship with God being possible. You and I as human beings, we were created with a, a purpose, a reason. And that was to enjoy a two-way connection, a relationship with our creator. That, that is when, when, when God created mankind, he made us different than anything else. Not to serve him, not to necessarily show off how awesome he is. I mean, the universe and the stars do that pretty amazingly. You and I were created to have a, a connection with God the Father. There would be no reason for Jesus to be born. There'd be no reason for us to remember and celebrate his birth, if not for this being the ultimate goal of it all. This is really what Christmas is. In fact, we read this in one of the prophecies about Jesus' birth. It says this, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God wants a relationship with us, which means God is with us. This is the very thing that God has wanted since the beginning of time. It's why he sent Jesus. It's what he wants to have with each and every one of us right now today. Regardless of what's going on in life, regardless of how much or how little church stuff, regardless of anything, God wants to be with us. God so loved the world that he wanted to be with the world, with you and I. But here's the thing about this relationship with God thing. I I think some of us, if we were honest with ourselves, we would maybe say, okay, what's the big deal with this though? You know what? Okay, a relationship with God is possible. I'm I'm not really that interested. Now, we'd never say anything like that, you know, in a service like this. And, but, but maybe inside, isn't that how we kind of approach this? It's not like we're anti-God. I, I assume most of us are not that. Most of us probably believe that Jesus really was born. I would, I would guess a fair amount of us really believe that he was more than just a good teacher, more than just a good example. But when we stop to think about it, this relationship with God peace is like, it's, it's kind of down on the list, you know? We're busy. We got other things to do. We're, we're running to and fro and the holidays are crazy. And, and then once it's past the holidays, back to normal life, which is also just as crazy. And, and you know what? We've, we've got different things that are occupying our schedules and our minds. And even if, even if we go through little rough patches, I mean, we tend to make it through, don't we? I mean, we're, we're here. We've made it this far. But here's the thing that I, I think there's a lot of ways to look at what a relationship with God means. But I think one of the ways we can approach it is kind of like insurance. Sounds real exciting, doesn't it? Insurance. Yeah, that's everybody's hot topic. I think most of us, we've got insurance, right? We've got car insurance and dental insurance and health insurance and all those things. And maybe the reason you have some insurance is because the government says you have to. Okay, so let's, let's kind of bypass that. But why, why, for the most part, do we carry insurance? Why do we pay monthly premiums? It's because we don't want to get caught in a place where, where something is more than we can handle. We don't want to get caught off guard and not know what to do. And so we have insurance. We have car insurance so that if we get in an accident, you know, we don't have to try and scrounge up thousands of dollars to buy a new one. It's, it's covered or we, you know, they can pay the other person's damages or we get medical insurance so that, man, if we do end up sick, if we do have to go to the hospital, have emergency surgery or something, we're not weighed down with thousands of dollars of medical debt. I mean, how, how would most you and I handle that if not for insurance? But most of the time when we, when we get insurance, it's for financial things, right? We don't want to, we don't want to be in debt. We want to be able to pay for a new car, but what do you and I do when problems in life arise that are not financial? 
What do we do when we face emotional struggles? What, what kind of insurance is there for that? What do we do when there's strife and tension in relationships? I mean, I don't know of a state farm policy that covers that. What do we do when, when just these, these battles rage on in our hearts and in our minds? How do we protect ourselves against those things that sometimes can be overwhelming for us? You see, I really think that's, that's part of this relationship with God. It's not everything, but it is a, it's a major factor. We have access to God through Jesus. And when we experience this connection, this relationship with God, he can, in a sense, protect our hearts and minds. There's like, there's like layers of, uh, of protection built up so that when we face a storm, which we all are either in or going to be someday, okay? It's, it's impossible to not. When we face that storm, we can make it through. It's not beyond our ability to endure. I don't think any one of us wants to experience cancer, Right? Whether that's in us or in a loved one, we don't, we don't want cancer. We, we, we don't like the uncertainty of, you know, the economy right now. No matter what side of the political aisle we fall on, I think we can all agree that, you know, kind of our, the politics in our nation and even the global situation is less than ideal, right? Uh, there, there are just, there's situations and things that happen in life that cause our worry to kind of grow, that cause our anxiety to grow. There are circumstances we face that can feel like just a crushing weight mentally and emotionally. What do we do with that? I mean, there's, like I said, there's no, there's no policy we can buy to protect, but this is where a relationship with God really can make a difference because what God offers us is peace. God offers you and I through a relationship with him, a supernatural peace that is beyond our understanding. It might not even make sense thinking about what we're dealing with. God offers us a supernatural peace that is above circumstances we might be dealing with. When we engage in a relationship with God, it's, it's not like, okay, I'm going to pray a prayer one time and then Allstate just sends me a check in the mail. Boom, there's peace. That's, that's, that's not how it happens. It's not what a relationship with God is. It's not just give me peace, boom. Peace is developed in us as we develop a relationship with God, as we allow God to change and transform our hearts. Our, our hearts and our minds have this layer of insulation that God grows, God develops, so that when anxiety pops its head up, when a situation would normally cause us to worry, we know that we know that we know, okay, God, you can give me peace no matter what's happening. And we actually experience that peace. If, if you are facing something right now in your life that, that has your anxiety just high and you just feel like you can't get out from under that, I want you to know it's one of the amazing things about Christmas. God wants a relationship with us. We don't have to face that alone. And I just wonder... I know maybe there's some questions that we have and there's hesitations and yeah, but this and what about that? Put all that aside for a moment. If peace were possible, would you want it? If supernatural peace were available to you that you could experience in a real way, would you want it? Because God says it's there as we experience a relationship with him. Sometimes there's fears that come up in life. It's, it's, it's higher than worry and anxiety. It's, it's real fear, fear about a diagnosis, fear about where a relationship might end up, fear about not having enough, fear about being found out and our secrets getting out there, maybe even fear about our, our own mortality. Fear can be crippling. If you've ever dealt with that, you know how heavy that can be. But what do we do when we experience fears like that? I know what most of us do, at least culturally speaking, we just try and fill up our lives with as many other things to distract us from fear, right? If I just do more, buy more, see more, go more, find a new relationship, if I can just push that fear down, then maybe I can trick myself that it's not really there. But we all know it is, right? 
those moments when we're just kind of sitting alone with our thoughts, that fear starts to creep up again. But how do, how do we ensure ourselves against fear? I think that's the relationship with God peace. God says that his perfect love can cast out fear. Now that casting out is not snap your fingers and it's gone. It's not flip a light switch and it's there. It's, it's not an immediate thing, but over time, as we get to know God, as we just, as we sit with him, as we talk to him, as this, as this relationship is developed, you know what happens? His love starts to overcome our fear. It's not that we'll never experience fear again. That's not a realistic expectation. But the more we, 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 we sit with God, the more our perspective is grown beyond just this incidence, Man, it is amazing how our fears can start to be silenced. If there were a way to deal with your fears better than ever before, would you want that? Maybe maybe we don't have all the answers again about what it means and how we get there, but like if God could really quiet your fears through his love and his presence, Would you be open to at least investigating? I think from time to time, every single one of us will feel this this kind of pit of loneliness, you know, where where we just feel like nobody really gets us. Nobody really understands. Nobody really knows what we've been through. Nobody really knows how we're feeling. We can start to just get wrapped up in our minds so much we just think I'm all alone. But God says we don't have to be. God says that he wants to walk with us. He wants to do life with us. He will never leave us, never forsake us. And that can be information that we hear in a service like this, or that can be transformation that radically changes our lives. But it all depends on whether we experience, whether we pursue this relationship with God that Jesus makes possible. God says that he will offer us strength beyond ourselves, that when we run out of strength on our own, we feel like it's more than we can endure. He can comfort us and give us strength. God offers us an eternal source of hope. When we put our trust in Jesus, we have heaven to look forward to someday. And that hope, he says, can be an anchor for our souls. If you've ever felt like, man, the water is, the storm is just raging against the the boat of your life and you feel like you're going down, how awesome would it be to have an anchor for our souls? No matter what happens, no matter how bad the storm may seem, God, thank you that I have an eternity to look forward with you in heaven. I, I think, I think the more we begin to understand what a relationship with God provides us, how God can impact our lives, I think maybe we start to see a little more why the angel said, hey, listen, I bring you good news. I think the more we start to understand how a relationship with God works in our lives, maybe the more we can actually experience joy in our lives. The angel said joy for all people. Maybe that can be us too. If, 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 we're, if we're facing something right now that is, is just heavy, it's troublesome, it feels like a or tornado's ripping through our lives, a relationship with God is ultimately the answer. It's where life and hope and peace and joy are found. And even if we're not going through something, how much better prepared could we be? We don't wait and buy homeowner's insurance once the house burns down. So often I think we wait until disaster strikes and then go looking for peace. And we can find God that way, absolutely. But what if we'd already developed a relationship with God ahead of time? How much better off could we be? How much pain could we save ourselves? How, how, how good could we stay on the inside? Maybe we wouldn't have to dip as low with God helping to keep us there. A, a, a relationship with God is possible for every single one of us. It's available, but there's only one way. There's only one way to have a relationship with God. And that is by putting our trust or our faith in Jesus. Jesus came to give us access to God. We were separated from God. We've all sinned. Jesus came to be the payment 
for our sin. We can be right with God. We can be reconnected with God by as simple as putting our trust in Jesus. It's not a church thing. It's not a religion thing. It's not a behavior thing. It's not a Bible study sort of thing. It is purely a Jesus thing. Why remember Jesus' birth? Why celebrate Christmas? Why do we sing joy to the world? The Lord has come because our way back to God has come. Our way, our, our, our ability to be right with God was born on Christmas Day.